right or left of Jesus Christ, the King, you know, the Son of God. Um, that all depends on you. So that's what he was saying, right? Um, and then it says the physical beast marking was done purposefully by the principalities in order for cognitive dissonance and giving us the expected sense of what the mark was, not knowing the mark was on those who were not in truth. Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders that would deceive even the elect, if that were possible. So the elect is like the uh, managers and leaders of the 144,000 who is all part of the assembly of God who was there in the beginning and will be the last ones to leave after the destroying angels. Um, get those who will have... Uh, the, the light of truth on them, the Holy Spirit, the signet, the Jesus Christ in their heart, the Holy Spirit has been planted. Um, and so they're not a false light, such as uh, great um, miracles and wonders. Um, th that's going to be a false light that the destroying angels uh, will be able to tell from the true light and also um, uh, those with the darkened minds already because of the cognitive dissonance has allowed them for fatality They can no longer grow because they think that that's on, the only way and it makes sense to them because it's sensible But at the same time the cognitive dissonance gives you the heavy eye And so your sensibility your ability to sense is then kept it is sealed um, On your own understanding and you need to have the seal of approval the sealing your sealing of the Holy Spirit, which is through Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ needs to approve you in order to go to the Father, because that is what is the guarantee. That's why it says uh, he's the guarantee. He has been glorified to that position by God Almighty. Um, seven, the current flow of wisdom to the next generation has a huge rift of darkness. This is cognitive dissonance. The mark of this beast of this generation are those stuck in cognitive dissonance. The mark is the darkness of the mind. The mind is the heart of your thoughts to the beat of your actions. This beast that has come up from below has swallowed entire generations. This fulfills the prophecy. The sign of Jonah is the only sign given to a, in quote, treacherous, end quote, generation. So there is a communication gap between generation X and generation Y. Mark is the darkness of the mind, or heart of thoughts, and therefore actions are no longer righteous. They are um, lived in a common sense, but they are trading out competence for incompetence. Um, this is evil. This is evil. And when I say evil, I don't mean like monsters or dark or sinister. Look at evil, E-V-I-L, as opposite of live, L-I-V-E. It's backwards, right? Anything that it makes you not be able to live in a peace and harmony of uh, virtue in the respects of all mankind is antithetical to what is righteous. Therefore, it is living backwards, but thinking that that is right. And that is evil. It's very sinister, but it's very easy to understand, right? It's almost the same concept as karma. Um, I remember... Um, reading somewhere that the concept of karma, there's all, all these different types of karma, like three different types of karma. But what it is, is you go through life doing good deeds, and this is giving you acceleration in life. And what you need, if you watch Chicken Run, right? It says you need thrust, right? In order to get something so big off the ground in flight, you need uh, acceleration. And with that acceleration, it's thrust, right? Anything that is karma, anti, like uh, anti-living, to giving yourself acceleration uh, inhibits you from going faster and slows you down, slows you down, slows you down. And that is not going to get you off the ground. That's not going to get you lifted, enlightened, glorified. It's not going to get you to the higher, the higher ways of thinking to being a true homo sapiens, right? And wisdom. Um, and so uh, even that, it's, it's evil. It's live backwards. Uh, and so above, so below. Reflection. Think about it like that, right? Um, and the, uh, sorry, competence for incompetence. Okay. This is the reason why we no longer can discipline children correctly because we see it as abuse because we have misinterpreted wrath for abuse. Um, in Matthew 12, 30, 36, he says, he answered them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Adulterous, it means false. It means being a fake adult. Uh, I always thought adulterous was uh, like adultery, right? Uh, but that is an adult being fake in marriage. That's adultery. Adulterous nation means that you are being a fake adult. You think that in your maturity as living in 
your social structures in your society and the way that you have progressed and are making yourself comfortable um, has to do with everything outside yourself in the world of things, right? Uh, that is fake. It's an illusion. It is necessary in order to do that. But comfortability is still a very subtle enemy because anything that it makes you comfortable um, gives you an attachment. And attachments, as you know, will cement to you into place and then you, you can no longer grow. That's why to know is not to know, right? But comfortability is also such a relief, but it's a fake relief. It's not uh, a relief that you want to sleep in this time right now because little do you know, it could be like an, uh, what's it called? an angler fish, right? You think that you that little light in front of this huge monster, you can't see the monster, but that li little light, you want to get it. Like from Finding Nemo, you want to get it, and it makes you happy, it makes you comfortable in the dark, and it makes you want to live there. But if you latch onto it, what happens? The monster comes and it eats you, and you realize that it was fake. That's what it it has. Um, that's what comfortability can can turn into, and that's why the the sign of Jonah. To add, that's why I said quote unquote treacherous generation because he kept every time when I was writing this and being imbued by the Holy Spirit he kept saying treacherous generation in quotes and I was like okay and then when I read it, it that's why the Bible verse doesn't say treacherous generation it says an evil and adulterous generation and the reason why it's treacherous generation that he was quote, saying to me is because think about like a path that is treacherous right uh, it takes balance it takes uh, discipline, it takes awareness, it takes control, um, and all these things help in the progress so that you can go through it. If you don't have those things, you can easily fall off of this treacherous balance, which we are in right now because it is closing of the covenant of love to a thousand generations. And once that covenant of love is done and fulfilled, what is going to happen next is going to be the covenant of wrath. It's going to be the covenant of um, what... God the Father and God the Son has promised to each other that vengeance will be his and he will come back for the, the vengeance and the vengeance will be in his hand um, to consider and reconsider all of the blood of the past um, of the the prophets and people who died in the name of Jesus Christ because he had made a promise and he being from that, now that same power of God the Father, who always fulfills his promises and what he says, um, you know that that's going to come about. And so right now we are in a treacherous point in our, our stage of uh, not only development, but in the closing of this, this uh, grace that we have been under. And that's why it is very important that people need to wake up out of this cognitive dissonance right quick, because the farther we go along towards the end of this uh, agreement, this contract, the harder it will be for people to get out of it. And then what you'll find is annihilation, right? Fatality. Um, they won't have the capability, the sensibility, the reasonability in order to get out of that. And then you have what you call um, being petrified in pride. And that is a weight. That is a final weight. That That's your core. Your core weight that holds you down and is false, right? Um, and you don't, you cannot be living with the truth with any type of falsity. You need to be purely truth. Um, okay. And then eight, thus the elect are marked with the name of God and the lamb, the light and righteousness, both give light to the mind and the destroying angels therefore know who is and who is not. So this shows that the minds are soulful with the Holy Spirit shining through the darkness of the minds that are dim or close to going out. The elect marked. Um, in Revelation 14, 1, we say, Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. That's what it was saying. But it says written on their foreheads, whereas the mark of the beast says in their foreheads, right? But it's a light shining inside and outside. Uh, whether this light is going to be physical, like you're glowing, who knows? But what the way that you we can understand it, right now is that it's going to be an awareness to the truth and uh, the maturity on how to uh, handle yourself when something is right and still living a righteous life, right? And being uh, in line with how it was taught for us to live in accordance to that way 
on a common sense of yourself. That is going to be your common sense, which is going to already be way higher than the logical reasonabilities of logical rules and regulations that man has put within societies and rules, which works here. But this is a common sense of virtue, and this virtualization will always trump anything that is logical man in reasoning. Um, and that's why you need to do that, because in order to be a citizen, I guess, in the kingdom of heaven, in that common sense, that high factor in common sense, that is has to be just your foundation of how you live every day. It can't be something that you have to struggle with. That's just how you live. If you can't live like that, then you don't belong there. Yeah? Um, Thus the elect are marked with the name of God and the Lamb. Okay. Okay. The destroying angels, this part. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 10.10, 10, it says, And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angels. So what that was uh, all about was, um, that's why in the Old Testament, they it was during when they were in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, even though God was giving them all the comforts that they needed in order to survive in this desert of wilderness for 40 days or 40 years, you know, that's a long time. Um, but he gave them food from heaven to drop out of the sky so no one was hungry. He would make animals just like come up to them like quails and stuff so that they could have uh, real food, real live, fresh, organic, free range food. And he would make miracles such as water coming out of rocks in the middle of the desert. Like, so he had them and yet they still grumbled and complained. And he, so he was just like, why are you guys still in this cognitive dissonance in your minds? I have given you everything, but you don't see that. You don't see that. You just see, you just want bigger things because you know how kings of your world live kind of thing, right? And so he's like, sometimes that's when God, this is in the Old Testament. So we didn't have this new covenant. They didn't have this new covenant that we have under grace. The God would be like, okay, you guys are crazy. And then would like send a bunch of snakes, like poisonous snakes to bite everybody or have the, the ground open up and swallow a bunch of people. Uh, those were those are destroying angels. They're unleashed on the earth in elemental forms and but there's always a way out of those things too, like with the poisonous snakes. Um they they repented. That's the first way way out. Humility needs to come before honor. And repentance means that I understand that I did something wrong and from this day forward I'm going to make a conscious effort with all of my heart to change that so that eventually it will become natural that I don't do that anymore and it's no longer going to be a struggle. It's my first nature is going to be not doing that and I don't have to think about it, right? It's become your new life as you have renewed your mind and renewed, uh, become a new being, uh, even in one or two ways. And so they could repent and then um, God gave them this golden snake to crawl on the serpent and said, okay, well, if you repent and you are true to that, then look upon the snake and be healed. And so, even though it was snakes that was sent by the destroying angels, because God was like, okay, I don't, under you're, you guys are too crazy. You're, you guys are nuts. Your free will is nuts. Um, uh, you guys are too immature. He still gave them a way out by sending another snake. So the thing that bit them and killed them was the very thing that they needed to face in order to be healed. And so sometimes the sword that is used to torment you needs to actually come back and you look at it differently in courage and in compassion almost and change into a virtualization of what used to be an evil thing that was killing you and you have to go back on your own in truth and then you put it to your wound and it heals you. Do you see how that works? It's, it's the cave you fear to enter is where your treasure lies. And many people fear to face the reflection of themselves in truth because everyone knows that they are not perfect even though they try to live so perfect. And that is why I really do not like the word special because whenever you make everything special, then that makes something else not special. And everything is either, and with that word, I'm like, everything is special or nothing is special. Just like with gun control or this whole gun thing, right? Either everyone has a gun or nobody has a gun. Not just some, some, some. No. It's like that. It's either one or no or none. There's only two options there, right? And so that's why uh, in a repentance, you need to come out in truth. And that's why you have to make a change in your core 
your heart of who you are, and then you have to prove that. And in